Ravens Bengals. This is a game that you can never be prepared enough for simply because these are two division opponents. And with your division opponents, these guys, they know you. Unlike a lot of other teams that you only play once a year, some even once every four years, you play these guys at least at a minimum two times a year. Sometimes, in some cases, maybe three. Uh, but because this game is so important, because it's so crucial, because like we said, you can never be prepared enough. We prepared to have another special guest to come on the channel to talk Ravens, Bengals, Sunday night football matchup. Let's get it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and YouTube team, keep it clean. A very, very special guest in the building. Uh, my guy Anthony from the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. Um, and, and we're here to, of course, talk about this Sunday night football game between Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. First and foremost, uh, Anthony, let everybody know uh, exactly what it is that you do and where they can find you at. Well, thanks for having me on again, Justin. Uh, good to good to chat with you. I always I would love having you on our show. Love talking about this rivalry here. But uh, our show is part of the Cincy Jungle Podcast Network. Cincy Jungle, of course, is within the SB Nation umbrella. So I do some writing at CincyJungle.com and then do some podcasting. Our show, the Orange and Black Insiders, on YouTube, all the major audio platforms as well. I co-host it with uh, with my buddy John Sheeran, who does a lot of the same in terms of writing and podcasting. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of fun and been doing it for a handful of years. You've been exceptionally kind to our show coming on uh, quite frequently. So we appreciate that and just have some fun with it, talking some Bengals and AFC North, all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I appreciate it. And now for the Bengals, how, how are you feeling about the Bengals right now as they sit in sit at two and two uh, with some very – both interesting wins and losses. How are you feeling about <laughs> Cincinnati right now? It's hard to say, and I think this Sunday night's going to tell me a lot, tell a lot of people a lot about both teams, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's been kind of a little bit of the same throughout really the entire division. It's a lot of, you know, good wins, solid wins, and then just these inexplicable losses. Yeah. Uh, when you look at it, I mean, the Bengals should very easily be 3-1 and one or 4-0 and oh at this point in time. Really weird set of circumstances, both mm -hmm. by their own <laughs> errors and out of their control in the very first game. You know, when uh, you lose a long snapper, you never really figure that's going to happen. And then they had two crazy. opportunities. Yeah, you had two opportunities mm -hmm. to win that game. Lose it at the very end of, uh, of overtime. Uh, the Steelers did not look good on offense on that side. Uh, you know, in, in that game, the Bengals had five turnovers in that game as well and still mm -hmm. had an opportunity to win. Next week, they go to Dallas face a backup in Cooper Rush. They barely lose that one at the final gun there by a field goal. So the losses have been by minimal, minimal amounts. Um, the wins have been by, you know, essentially more than one possession the last two weeks, and they're starting to write, write the ship a little bit there. But here's the thing, man. I, what I can't get my, get my arms around with this team is in the four games, they're two and two, and they've basically played for varying amounts of time four backup quarterbacks, right? Mm. Trubisky benched. Um, you know, Cooper Rush, I mentioned him. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the Jets, Flacco backup. Then this week, uh, the unfortunate injury to Tua, right. Teddy Bridgewater comes in. So you're two and two against four backup quarterbacks at this point in time. Mm. And I don't really know what to make of that. But it seems like slow start. They're starting to hit their stride a little bit. This game's going to tell me a lot, though. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a really good point uh, about the uh, the four backups. Now, something that you mentioned um, as far as the games and just how close they've been and the excruciating losses and how the Bengals, they could have been three and one or, or even four and zero. Oh. Um, but if you would have taken out the Bengals name from everything that you said um, and then thrown in the Ravens names, then we could be having the same exact conversation. Uh, because the Ravens, they uh, again in in the losses, they've been by all one score games, um, and then with the wins, they've been by multiple scores, uh, multiple possessions. 
So um, it's like the, the Bengals and the Ravens are sort of on that same collision course, and now they're getting ready to meet up with each other uh, for Sunday night football. Now, through these first four games, I know both teams have certainly been up and down, but for your Bengals, who would you say right now uh, is the MVP of the team? Ooh, good question. Uh, you know, on offense, a guy playing really, really well is T. Higgins. Um, okay. I mean, Jamar Chase is making plays and others, but uh, it's really been T. Higgins who's been taking advantage of all of the bracketed coverage that Jamar Chase has been receiving and all the attention he's been receiving. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're seeing a little bit more one-on-ones with T. Higgins. And then, you know, as pressure in the sacks and all the quarterback hits the first two weeks amassed, the Bengals went to a little bit more, hey, let's let's wait for the big play. Let's pop the big play after we work the underneath stuff to Tyler Boyd, mm-hmm. T. Higgins, um, work the short intermediate, and then those big plays will end up opening up there. So I think T. Higgins is is playing really, really well at this point in time. Unfortunately, he's already had a concussion and an ankle injury in just four weeks of, of football. So mm-hmm. um, hopefully he can, he can kind of uh, heal up there. But at any rate, he's been playing very, very well. And then you look on the defensive side of the ball, uh, really Von Bell, the safety, he had two interceptions last week. Uh, He's played pretty well. And then the corners, yes, even Eli Apple has been playing pretty well out there, had a decent game against Tyreek Hill, wasn't covering him all that much or wasn't targeted all that much in coverage against Tyreek Hill last week, despite Mm -hmm. all the chatter. And Chidobe Awuzie remains a, a quietly solid corner on that team. And then, you know, there's a couple of other cast of characters. Uh, unfortunately, I would say their, their MVP on defense, he won't be playing this week. And he, he's been, he was out last week and that's DJ reader, the big, the big nose tackle, um, mm-hmm. very, very good player, underrated player in the league. Um, he's going to be out for probably another month or so. He's on short-term IR with um, what's believed to be a knee issue. So um, he was playing exceptionally well before he went down with an injury too. Uh, okay. Okay. Now um, speaking of injuries, uh, what would you, and not even just injuries really, but uh, for the Bengals as a whole on defense, what would you feel like the Ravens could take advantage of in this game? Well, I, I think it's just Lamar's legs, right? I mean, uh, the Bengals have, uh, and this, we I go back to the four backup quarterback situation, right? I mean, the Bengals mm-hmm. haven't been letting up a lot of points and the defense has played really well. They finally started to create turnovers in these last two wins get a a little bit more quarterback hits and sacks the last two games. So obviously all that correlates to the wins, but um, you know, uh, it's, it's really Lamar's legs. And if he can uh, do that trademark deal that he does, which is extend plays and, and make, make players miss in space and all of that. um, I I think the Bengals last year did a pretty decent job of containing him. They definitely did not stop Lamar in the, in the first game. He was not playing in the second one, obviously, but, Um, so the, you know, I think Lamar making plays with his legs. I know Mark Andrews is a weapon. I know other, he's got other outlets that are great weapons. So, you know, I I think the running game this week is a big test for the Bengals. JK Dobbins now seemingly being back and, you know, I'm hearing Gus Edwards is going to practice and, you know, you got Justice Hill back in the mix. All these guys are kind of healthy ish after not being around last year. So the run game is something I'm watching particularly, with what I said about DJ Reader being out of the lineup, because he's kind of, even though he can get to the passer for a big guy a little bit, um, he's he's definitely a key to their run defense. So uh, that's what I'm looking at this week. Um, you know, I think Sam Hubbard on the edge can play pretty good contain and is decent against the run, but mm-hmm. Lamar's just a different different cat. You know, he he can do a lot of different things. So we'll see what happens there. Okay. And with that being said, as far as the Bengals, what's something that they've struggled with to this point of the season? Uh, that you want to see them improve on in this game getting into the end zone Mm. this is something that they it it was something that was exposed a bit in the postseason last year if you remember on their run I mean they were winning games and they would score in kind of flurries but it was long field goals a lot of uh you know long drives and sacks and and offensive penalties and negative runs that were issues in the postseason, and the Bengals had to settle for field goals more often than getting into the end zone. So mm-hmm. it's a little bit of a problem again this year. Uh, this year, but it's been remedied a little bit the past couple of weeks with the wins. But you know they got to get something more out of the run game. They have to get more consistency there, and they have mm-hmm. to be able to when the field shortens because they have these big play guys, right? Chase and Higgins and the guys that can do yards after the catch or go deep. But when that field shortens, they got to be able to get it in the end zone a bit more regularly. 
obviously have a good, you guys are familiar with it with Justin Tucker. They've got a good weapon at kicker, but mm-hmm. um, you know, touchdowns, tr- you know, if you're trading touchdowns for field goals or vice versa, that's, that's usually a formula for uh, between mm-hmm. a, a win and a loss. So they need to oh, get yeah. into the end zone a little bit more. All right. And, and speaking of getting in the end zone, that's of course how teams, that's how they score their points. Um, <laughs> but when this, when this game ends and the clock hits zero, uh, how do you think it's going to have went? Which team do you think is going to uh, have ended up getting in the end zone a little bit more than the other one? And, and how do you think this game is going to go? Uh, on my show last night, I actually pred- predicted a slight Ravens win. Um, I know the Bengals basically, you know, uh, t- took it to Baltimore last year twice and, mm-hmm. you know, outscored them by quite a bit and all of that. Mm-hmm. One of which games in particular was, you know, you didn't have Lamar, you didn't have a lot of players on the field at that point. And that's kind of been the rallying cl- cry of, Ravens nation this year is, Hey, you know, we're going to get back healthy and wait till we see you again, that sort of thing. And so, um, you know, I, I think also uh, it's a home game. Uh, The Bengals are much better in primetime under Zach Taylor and and Joe Burrow than they were under Marvin Lewis and and Andy Dalton. They still Mm. have, I I can't remember a Sunday night win by the Cincinnati Bengals, quite honestly. I mean, I've seen them win on Monday night and Thursday night, but Sunday nights just do not treat them very well. Mm. It's in Baltimore. And I think quite honestly, based on what I kind of saw last week, a little bit from watching the game, the Marcus Peters, John Harbaugh thing, this team's pretty pissed off. It seems like for lack of better words. And so um, between that, maybe some bulletin board material from last year, maybe the the Ravens win a close one here. Wouldn't surprise me either way of the outcome. Same thing with, with the, at this point in time, as I'm looking at it down the road in the rematch, either outcome wouldn't surprise me. Uh, mm-hmm. at that one uh, either I, I when the schedule came out I had I had the Bengals splitting with the Ravens um, I had them sweeping the Steelers that obviously didn't happen had them splitting with the Ravens and then uh, splitting with the Browns as well so um, you know we'll see yeah okay well appreciate you and thank you for coming on and one more time before we get out of here let everybody know where they can find you at. Well, all of our podcast audio side stuff is on iTunes and Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all the major ones were out there. And then uh, we have a YouTube channel, The Orange and Black Insider. So go check that out. And then all the writing and the podcast is also available on CincyJungle.com. It's a Bengals blog through SB Nation. All right. Perfect. Appreciate you coming on, team. Keep it clean. Make sure you check out all of Anthony's work and subscribe. Check out his podcast. Leave a like on the video. He out. Like the Ravens, and you know just what I mean. What I mean.